Welcome back. Yes? How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Gordon. Stroppy Nickers at home? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Thanks for, for that. Mm, <laughs> nice to see you. Hello. Nice see, uh, nice good to see you. See you. Good to see you all. Welcome back. Thank, thank you. you. The best performer brigade. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank However, you. it wasn't perfect, was it? Last time we had 22 complaints. That was 22 too many. Yeah? Yep. Yes. yeah. Tonight, we got the perfect meal, so okay. one perfect results. All right. 150 okay. plates, all paid for. OK. We got the most amazing menu. Something I've had in the back garden for months. <laughs> you're cooking my pigs tonight. Okay, it means a lot for me. Absolutely. And you've clearly proved you're good, but tonight is the chance to prove you're great. Okay. Yes? Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Let's get cooking All on right. the sections. Let's go. Francesco and Peter here. GB, Lucy over there, yes? Right. So, the salad um, of roasted scallops with new potatoes is a signature dish. Put the pans on, get the scallops out, and we'll do it together, yes? Okay. Let's start off. How many with... per? Yep, there we go. I knew you'd be first button in there. <laughs> yeah. Fuck me, have I missed you? <laughs> okay, potatoes. Nice hot pan. That's colouring nicely. Now the scallops. Into the hand and open. We've got curry powder and salt. Two thirds to one third. Back in. And we go round from 12 o'clock. Why do we do that? So that you know where you started yeah. every time. Exactly that, so they're not overcooked. Yeah. Now, it's so important not to overcook scallops. Give them a little shake to make sure they're not sticking. Finger on and turn. They've got a nice colour on there. And look. See the colour? Yeah. Now, touch. They're nice and firm and out. See? You don't get better fast food than that, I can assure you. <laughs> out. Look. Summer truffles, yeah? I mean, yeah. amazing. Great delicacy. As they hit the scallop, it cooks the truffle. Oh, yeah. So it perfumes the scallop. Yeah. Yeah. Salad, creamy vinaigrette. And that has to be the best starter. Yeah, in London tonight, look. Thanks. Yes. Okay, ladies, here we go, yes? Oh, boy, yes? Yes, yes Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Well yes. done, getting this far. Now you're here, make it worthwhile, yes? Yes, Gordon. Okay, yes. on order, four covers table three, four seared scallop, four roast pork, four apple dessert. Yes, Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Thank you. Let's go, ladies, yes? Tonight's brigade are Peter, Francesca, GB and Lucy. Oh, shit, sorry, sorry. Fuck you know. Are you all right? Yeah. No, Last time the right? doctors yeah, were in the kitchen, they the almost blinded me, but... They were yeah. by far the best of all my amateur brigades. What do you want me to say? Well done for fucking them I up. don't want you to say. I want you to say something once, Mr Ramsey, and then shut the fuck up. Take the oil off the stove quickly. Oh, fuck me. What are you doing? For the last three hours, yeah. you've been calling me mate. Gordon. Gordon. James, I'd be greatly appreciated for the next 20 minutes. Gordon. Gordon. I'm not your fucking mate. Right, where's yeah. the scallops? Come over. We've got no, come on. Five. How many scallops? Five and five, yeah? Please, yeah. Should be five and five. Nice, tight circle. I'm not very good at it. Yeah, don't go too wide. Come on, ladies, please. I can't get any more simpler than this, yes? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Go, please. Table three. Peter, Francesca, start your third table. Good, let's go. GB. Yes, Gordon. Step up a gear, please. Yes, Gordon. Let's go. Yes, Gordon. The excitement about cooking this at home, yes? Yes. Yeah, you can actually sit down and eat it with your guests. Do you understand? It's not something you have to spend fucking three hours in the kitchen for. Right, Lucy, watch. Yep. Creamy vinaigrette. We've got creme fraiche in there. Yes. Chopped truffle. It's basically the vinaigrette finished with creme fraiche. So it's nice and light. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. That's beautiful. Maximum amount of salad. Let's go quickly. Okay. Right Please go. Up. Table eight. You fill the wedding store, yes? The scruffy one. Table 14. It's a very messy cook, you know that. <laughs> huh? I only have eyes for your cookery, Gordon. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it, Peter. <laughs> Service, please. Seven pounds for that. I'd pay 17 pounds for that. Go. Please, go. Table eight. Let's go. Well done. It's a perfect time of year for a barbecue, and no barbecue is complete without a good pork sausage. Hello, Brian. Hello, Gordon. Good to hey, see you, mate. Likewise, good to see you, too. Time, mostly. My pigs, Trini and Susanna, have been hanging for a week. Now my local butcher, yeah. Brian Randall, is going to help me get them ready to cook. The cuts I'll be using for the restaurant are the belly and the loin of pork. The loin is at the top of the pig where the back bacon comes from. I don't want to waste any of my pigs, so Brian is going to make the other bits into mince so I can make my very own sausages for the barbecue. Along here, please. Let's go. Jack, come down. Megan, come down. This is Trini meat. We've got to mix all with our hands. With our hands. Okay. We're adding thyme, sage, apple, yes. onion and whole grain mustard. And for the casing, oh, I'll be using natural sausage skin, Trini's lower intestine. <laughs> sausage mix into the machine. Cool, dear. Okay. Got lots of people to feed. 
Matilda, that big? Uh, bigger. Happy with the size? Yeah, yeah. Yes? Thank you, guys. First time I made the sausages. Thank you. Right, let's get ready for the barbecue, yes? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, your Trini sausages are ready. Lily, large one, medium one, or small one? No. There we go. Up. Off you go, my darling. The sausages are going down a storm, but I've saved a special cup for Janet Street Porter. Yeah, you've had all sorts in your mouth, yeah? Yeah. I've got a bit of a surprise. <laughs> 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 Janet Street Porter, what do you mean, uh? <laughs> what do you mean, uh? <laughs> that that, that Trini's tail. <laughs> Have a little taste. Oh, come on. That meat tastes good. Isn't that delicious? Even the towels are getting the thumbs up, but will I win my wager with Hugh? Cheers, man. Cheers. Good, well good health. Thank you. Good to see you. A couple of months ago, I bet Hugh that he wouldn't be able to tell which one of my pigs I've been feeding cherry beer and which was beer free. Right, you ready for the taste test, yes? First of all, so this is the loin, this is the tenderloin. Tenderloin. A and little bit of liver. Yes. That's so juicy. Delicious. To I mean, me, that just, that just tastes of quality pork. Very, very good pork. So this is from the other pig, but I don't know which other pig. That's right. If you thought of one plate that had been treated differently with alcohol, which would it be, the red or the blue? I would go for the blue one, because it's tastier. It's just everything's a, the liver's a bit sweeter and the pork a bit porkier. Yeah. Well, that's extraordinary. <laughs> Because the blue plate is no beer. No beer. Okay. And the red plate the beer. was Susanna. Okay. Who got fed the beer. Interesting. Yeah. Hugh got it wrong for the best of reasons. Um, the meat from Susanna, the beery pig, has lost a little of the pork's natural sweetness. Very nice so he too. chose the tastiest, but, but not the beeriest. Well done. That was worthwhile. An experiment. interesting experiment, definitely. Um, Time to marinate myself. <laughs> Scallops that were, you know, king there without a doubt. Just fell apart. It had a really wholesome taste to it, and it still had that sort of meaty texture which you look for in a scallop. Considering I don't really eat scallops at all, it was probably the second time I've tried it. So, yeah, it's really good. The presentation was beautiful. Looked lovely. Thought it was a little bit chewy. But, um, overall, compliments to the chef. Yeah. Uh, right. Feedback from the scallops. Very good. 49 people up here. 49. Yeah. Yes. A great news. Well done. Fantastic. Yeah, very good. Not total perfection, but it's bloody good. I mean, really good. Now, the next course, yeah, I've really seriously looked after these pigs like you've got no idea. Like having a patient that you fall in love with over the last three months. So, you know, the pork's going to be a little bit more difficult, but well done. Thank Clear you. down. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon. Hello. Hi. I'm so sorry to hear you didn't enjoy your starter. What's wrong with it? Potatoes. Some of the potatoes was a bit harder than the other potatoes. Right. Do I look bothered? No. Because <laughs> 49 customers have agreed to pay for it because they loved it. But I'm looking forward to the next one. <laughs> and if you don't pay for the next course, you're going to smash your sunglasses. <laughs> next on the menu, the brigade cooked Trini and Susanna's belly and loin. David Walliams learns that cooking Sunday lunch means getting your hands dirty. Can I wipe them on your trousers? <laughs> Go on, then, quick. Because you, you, you already <laughs> wiped them, it's fine. And I get tooled up to go hunting. I feel like a fucking action man. Welcome back. Teaching people to cook Sunday lunch has been a real challenge, but Little Britain's David Williams beats them all. I've never actually bought fish from a fishmonger. Serious? No, I've only ever bought it in a packet from a supermarket. Honestly. Is that quite shameful? You swung the channel. I didn't see any fish that day. No. Oh, no, I saw that one, actually. Yeah. Can I hold it? No. Oh. David, for fuck's sake, hold it nicely. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I take it. Oh, my hands uh, What else? What else? Oh. What else have we got? Oh, I think your fingers on your jeans. <laughs> you have to wash those jeans, when you? you have to take them straight off when we get home. <laughs> salmon. Well, salmon's nice, but it's a bit boring. It's a bit boring. Yeah, have a lovely, beautiful halibut. Halibut is amazing. Lovely Scottish inshore halibut. I think we'll do. Can you fill it in? Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. There's nothing better than getting a fishmonger to fill it. No. You're fishing on it. We're celebrities, so we won't be paying. <laughs> so thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, there they are. That's disgusting. <laughs> you, can I wash them? My... Oh. <laughs> Just put them on the back yeah. of your trousers. I'm not doing that. Oh, come on. Can I wipe them on your trousers? Go on, then, quick. Because you, you, <laughs> you already <laughs> wiped them, it's fine. Thank you. David Williams says he's 70% straight. But one thing's crystal clear. He's a lot happier in a dress than he is in the kitchen. I'm going to get him to cook a simple Sunday lunch of halibut and vegetables in red wine. OK, do we need to put the, the aprons on or something? Uh, have you got an apron? I've brought a couple. Your ones, it's a bit more masculine because it's got little dogs on it. It's very right, camp, no? Your camp? Uh, you have a very, very big camp appeal. Uh, uh, put it on. Uh, oh. Stop misbehaving. You know, a lot of women, when I said I was coming on this show, were very jealous and said they fancied you. Serious. I said that to my mates and they said the same about you, how much they fancy you. Really? <laughs> what, your male friends? Yes. Well, that's no bad thing. No, that's a nice thing. Right, I want you to take the skin off. When was the last time you took the skin off a uh, fish? Well, I've never taken the skin off. OK. Now, watch. Best thing to do, keep the fish. <laughs> I feel so funny. Just scared. get on with it. I feel, Stop look at this thing here, Just honestly. please, Christ please, almighty. come on, be right. professional. Leave the knife flat and just pull it. Oh, so um, you're just loosening it, really? Just loosening you're not already it. cutting it. Yeah, slide it that. Absolutely, just slide it through. I didn't know you were left-handed in the kitchen. I am. Huh? That's great. All good chefs are left-handed. Really? Again? Even Jamie Oliver. Oliver. He's right-handed. He's lovely, though, isn't he? Because <laughs> he's kind of got it all, isn't he? <laughs> oh, God, it's going to be a great lunch. Uh, when was the last time you had an actual dinner party? When was the last time you actually threw...? Don't know, probably quite a few years ago. Really? And was it successful? No. Right, we're going to cut up some pancetta. What I want you to do is just cut what they call lardons. The garnish is going to be quite straightforward. Um, bacon, mushrooms, roast them all off, OK, and make a bit of a sauce. They're quite fatty, the pancetta. Yeah, they are. So we're going to saute them with no oil. Get these shallots and just sort of cut them in half. Timing's crucial, we know that. Yeah, I know, but that's normally where people come unstuck, especially with, like, Sunday lunches and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. A lot to do. A lot to do. <laughs> well, I'm doing this. <laughs> You're in touch with your feminine side, aren't you? We are. You are as well, aren't you? No, but all your sketches are all sort of... Basically dressed. dressing up as women and that yeah. kind of Yeah, but thing. is that as sort of transvestite or is that as a... Just for fun, really. Just for fun. I don't know. Uh, I've never dressed up as a woman, you know that? Well, your wife's out. So... <laughs> all her clothes are upstairs. <laughs> I can show you a thing or two. Shallots in there now? Shallots in. In, Good. in together, yeah. Some pepper. A little bit of rock salt, please. Sprinkle that with a little bit of sugar now. Yeah, oh. a teaspoon, yeah, nice. And what that does now, it starts to caramelise. OK, I want you to tip the mushrooms into there for me. Oh, there's a lot of food, Gordon. OK, now we're going to open some wine. Give a nice sort of glass in there. A glass. OK, yeah. You, um, you seem to change girls, like seasons in cooking. You know, I go through uh, autumnal, seasonal, then we go on to something lighter. Every time I see you, you're always with a no, new I've girlfriend. I've just got a lot of friends. They're not girlfriends, they're just friends of mine. And the perfect girl would be who? My mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a Mary. I don't really know. Denise Van Outen would be pretty top of this, wouldn't no, she? Doesn't. I mean, because she's funny and she's very beautiful. I mean, she, and she's fun. Yes. And lively and yeah, intelligent. Yeah, she, she'd and be stunning. fun. I mean, you've got to think when you're getting married or something, you're going to think, oh, you know, I'm going to be with this person for yeah. at least six months. So <laughs> <laughs> the idea now, this fish, is to actually put some colour on there. In we go. Good. Good. Right, that's coming down nicely. Get a spoon, OK, and have a little taste. And just what? tell me if you think it needs a little bit more seasoning. It's delicious. I don't think it needs any more because... That's, that's Certainly perfect. not salt, because that, that um, bacon is very, very salty. Yep, that's perfect. Nice. If you just touch that there, look, it's, it's sort of... You've got a little bit of resistance there. Yeah. So it's just a little bit pink in the middle. OK, okay. Well, you're waiting for it to go hard. Yep. <laughs> and then you put it in your mouth. Is that all right? That's exactly that, yes. OK. Now, try not to dribble round the outside of the plate. That's yeah. really impressive. One last little thing what I want you to do. Put a bit of that on top of the fish. Exactly, look. Wow. See, that wasn't too bad, <laughs> was it? It was great. Uh, I loved it. I've actually cooked you, a meal. You've done very well. Uh, you did very well. That is delicious. This is the nicest meal I've ever had that I've ever had a hand in cooking. Really? Mm. Well done. Thank you very much. Time for the main course, Trini and Susanna. Now, I'm going to be serving the diners two cuts, the belly of pork and the loin of pork. The belly takes a lot longer to prepare, but it's worth every second. There's definitely no waste on a pig. This is a belly of pork. It's cheap and delicious. And look, it's got these wonderful layers of fat. It's packed with flavour. Score.
season olive oil garlic thyme season both sides and lay it on top of your garlic it lifts the belly of pork off the tray and stops it from drying out white wine tin foil hot oven two hours look underneath the Lovely. Gravy. Deglaze the tray with the white wine. Reduce. The smell off that is amazing. Because the garlic's been roasted slowly and it's got that really nice, sweet flavour to it. Chicken stock. Reduce. We just smell that gravy now. You know damn well it's going to taste magical. Sieve. Push all that garlic through there. That is fucking delicious. Press pork. Place another tray on top of that. Weigh down. And set it in the fridge. Chill six hours. And look at that. I could take a slice and actually eat that cold. Cut. They're like little caramel slices, compact, full of flavour, and now ready for the oven. Hot oven, 10 minutes. Look at those absolute beauties. And just look at the textures and that nice, crispy top. Rich, sumptuous, full of flavour, and absolutely delicious. Press belly of pork, done. This, for me, is the most important main course we'll ever cook in the F-Word restaurant, yeah? Yes, yes. I've had these just after birth. We've hand-reared them, and we're going to look after them. Belly of pork. Be careful, yeah? It starts to spit. We're going to put three or four portions in, some tin fall over, and just put it to the back of the stove, OK? OK. So with the pork tonight, we're serving, yes, the mustard mash, the broccoli, and the caramelised apples. Now, you need some heat in that pan, sugar in, and that's going to form a nice caramel, OK? A nice teaspoon of mustard, right at the last minute, in with the mashed potato. A nice mustard mash. So, right, GB, what's with the broccoli? Okay. What's in the pot with it? Onions, Onions almonds, and That's right. capers. That's right. Apples, nicely coloured. And then finished with some fresh spring onions in, and a little bit of chopped tarragon. Yeah? OK, now the tarragon, the apples, the spring onion is amazing. Look, that is just mind blowing. Good. The belly of pork is cheap and delicious, but it's the loin that's the real classy cut. Loin of pork, rich, sumptuous, it's the most tender part of the pig. This is better when it's slightly pink. Yes, that's right, Granny, pink. First of all, you have to score that fat on the outside, you get some really nice, crispy crackling. Score. If you haven't got a sharp knife, I mean really sharp, use a Stanley knife, it works brilliantly. Stuff. Just slice into the centre and open it up. And look. Lemon zest. It gives it a really nice, summery, zesty lightness. Sage. Sage and pork go brilliantly well together. Parsley, garlic. Nice little thin shards. Salt, pepper. Olive oil. It's like a blanket of aroma. Fold it over, just like an envelope. Tie. Put the string in the pot to stop it from running around. Salt, pepper, olive oil. Mop it up. It smells amazing, it's not even cooked yet. Straight in. Hot oven, 45 minutes. Just the smell of that is amazing. Look, crispy crackling. Rest. Untie. Carve. Nice thick slices. That's what I like to hear, that noise, the crispy crackling. Tender and delicious. Fragrant lemon zest with the sage and the parsley. Extraordinary. Pork loin with lemon and sage, done. I want 
every single diner paying for their main course. Let's go. Okay. Right, ladies. Four nice belly of pork. Yes, yes, yes. Pizza. Four pork away. Yes. Right, let's yes. go. Lucy Lou, yes. GB. Yes, Gordon. Four portions of pork away. Yes, Gordon. Let's go, please. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's I can do that bit. Let's put that back. Yeah. Apples on. You want to get that pan really hot next time. Let's go. Quick. So that has to be the perfect way of eating Trini and Susanna. Yeah. Go. Ten or ten. Lucy. Yeah. GB, please. Four more away. Yes, Gordon. Belly of pork in. Gordon, I've got a question. Jesse, you're going to have to shout at me. I can't hear you. Are these burnt or are they caramelised? Sherry, toss them. They're caramelised, yes? Okay. Right. Okay. Lovely. Here we go. Let's go. Just need the potatoes. Now, look, doesn't that look fantastic? It does. Table eight, yeah, go. Let's go. Take that pan away from me. Yeah, you right. Yeah, I need two fours there. now, yeah? Okay. Two fours away. Ladies, last tables, yes? Yes, Gordon. Yeah, yeah. make them the best. Yes, Just Gordon. like the first table, yes? Right, the first. Oh, hello. This is great. <laughs> Oh, I love yeah. it. Fantastic. Right, OK. Would you pay for those? I 100%. 100%. Definitely. GP, yeah. Definitely. Fantastic. I think it's well no question. Question. Table eight, go. Thank, Thank you. you. Come here. Two break. seconds, please. Well done. Yeah? Hard. Yes, good. A lot going on there. Definitely. Yeah? yeah. Well done. Tough. You didn't let yourselves down. More importantly, you didn't let the girls down, did you? Trini and Susanna, well done. No. Yeah. Can we Clear down. Thank you. I really, really liked it. There were loads of different uh, varieties of textures and sort of tastes in there. Um, I thought that obviously there were a lot of quite elaborate flavours, but they merged together quite well. The belly of pork I've, I've never had before, so I was a bit bright about that, but I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. That was superb, like the different variations. I don't really, I've never had like crackling before as well. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The accompaniments as well, the mash and the vegetables, superb. Can't fault it. Can't fault it at all. Lovely. So hey. nice to see you. How are you? Well, Marie didn't get any crackling, so we we, we had a little word, and look, look what Damn. came. We got an extra crackling. Oh. Are you managing uh, being married to this hippie? <laughs> Always looking for freebies. <laughs> Always on the scrounge. <laughs> ah, and such a messy cook. <laughs> Uh, that you're right. Honestly, I mean, you must go mad, no? Uh, um, as an expert with pigs, yeah, um, what do you think of the loin and the belly? Honestly, delicious. Really? Delicious. Really lovely. Uh, Coming from you, that means a lot. You know that. A big thanks for all no, the no, help you put into those pigs. I don't think You've enjoyed them, haven't you? Yeah, I have enjoyed them, and it's been an, an amazing experience, but highly emotional. You know, I didn't think pigs well, could be I so know. You had a tough time when yeah, you took tough. them to slaughter. I mean, the children, obviously. They're right over here tucking in. They're tucking in away, and they're obsessed with the crackling, but I'd never thought they'd be that excited about it from sort of three months ago when they start sort of getting in the pen and they're all sort They've of... They've got over it nursing. quicker than you have. I'm looking forward to the challenge, yes. I, I can't believe Get I've got to some cooking in a minute. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm having a lovely, relaxing Get time. Get prepared to I'm, lose. I'm not feeling competitive. <laughs> Guess what? I'm not feeling competitive. Aren't you? I'll see you later. I will do when I'm I get in there. You. Thank you. Cheers. Right. Hello. Hello. Mm. How are you? Hello, my ladies. Mm. How are you? Jack, did you enjoy the pigs? Megan, did you enjoy looking after the pigs? Yeah. Yes? Do they taste better because you reared you them and grew them? Honey's still eating them. You suggested that we have cows in the back garden. Not right? on your nelly. When you were gone <laughs> this morning, mean? we had the new grass laid. No cows. No. So there we go. Listen. It's not no common. It's <laughs> no bloody cows. So what about a donkey for Christmas? Yeah. Yes. Lambs. Lambs. Yeah, baby lambs. Oh. I'm so glad you enjoyed the pigs. Good to see you. Good kiss. Mm. See you later, guys. Save room for dessert, yes? Hey, JB. Where is he? How did it go down? Very well. Very well, yes? Very, very well. The feedback was what? Um, very juicy. They love the flavours. Nice combination with the apples yes. and the pork. Yes. Uh, they love the mash. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastic. Oh. Tell me how many customers are not paying for the main course? None. Yes! 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 <laughs> Seriously? Yes. No one. Yeah. Really no one. No one. Yes! That's fantastic. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. Oh That's my fucking goodness. amazing. Next on the menu, Hugh and Janet take me on in the recipe challenge. Stodge, stodge, stodge! These people will have to lie on the bloody carpet yeah. afterwards and get over their carbohydrate overload. And I'm going fishing for bass. Sea bass. I've never caught a fish from a spear. Yeah, and not bad. First time out. I've come to Devon to go spearfishing for my favourite fish. 
Everyone thinks you've got to be on the Great Barrier Reef to go, but no, we're here in Plymouth. I feel like a bit of a fucking hunter because we're two experts and we're in search of the Rolls Royce of the sea, the sea bass. Spearfishing is a controversial sport. Some people think it's cruel, but in fact, it's one of the most sustainable methods of fishing, so I'm keen to give it a try. This is Eddystone Lighthouse, 10 miles off the Plymouth coast. I've been brought here by two of Britain's best spear fishermen, Dave Thomason and Dave O'Callaghan. It works more or less like a crossbow. Yeah. You put the butt of the gun against your chest and just pull that back and hook it into the notch on the spear. Put barbs on the end, stop the fish coming off. Yeah. Pull the trigger. Yeah. Shoot. And out it comes. This is the best place to shoot. In the head. In the head. Yeah. Yeah. Enough chat, it's time to get tooled up and into the water. Hopefully, we're going to catch something. Visibility's not too bad. Fingers crossed. I feel like a fucking action man. I've got to dive about 10 metres down, settle into the kelp, and wait for the sea bass to swim past me. Spearfishing using an oxygen tank is frowned upon for giving the fisherman an unfair advantage over the fish. So we're doing it with a snorkel, which means holding your breath, and it's not as easy as Dave makes it look. This is supposed to be the perfect place to hunt for sea bass because they flock to the rocks to feed. But so far, all I can see is seaweed. I missed one right in front of me. By the time I reloaded, the fish turned around and went like that and then fucked off. Sea bass are a challenge to catch, but they're bloody delicious, and I'm not quitting till I've got one. And finally, they all come at once, and I'm on a roll. I've got three stunning sea bass. I've never caught a fish from a spear, and not bad. First time out. Amazing experience. Bloody hard work. I'm fuck gonna get out. Fishing etiquette says that you should only catch what you're going to eat. Just try and stop me. Put your elbows inside and pull out. Jesus. <laughs> now we're going to score them. About an inch and a half apart. It just makes it cook evenly. And more importantly, it seasons it inside. Salt, lemon, saffron. This is where it gets really exciting because the saffron's flavouring the salt and colouring the salt. Now, fennel and bass go brilliantly. I've been serving it for years, and it's just that really nice rustic aniseed flavour that just goes brilliantly with the bass. Open it up and place all that lemon and fennel in there. And that keeps the bass really nice and whole, so it cooks evenly, and more importantly, got that amazing flavour. Wrap it in tinfoil and just drizzle that with olive oil, and that keeps it really nice and moist. And leave yourself a little handle on the end so you're not pissing around when you come into turn. The sea bass only need to cook for eight minutes on each side. I didn't realise it was going to be that hard. I mean, you've got to be physically fit. Yeah, it helps. You haven't got to be super fit, though. I know people in their 80s who still spearfish. Is it a sport now that's getting popular all the time? It's becoming a lot more popular. It's a good way of getting some fresh seafood and having fun at the same time. Can spearfishing become commercial? No, it's actually illegal to sell speared fish. It's a European regulation. It's illegal to sell fish caught with a projectile. From what I've seen, spearfishing is very efficient. Only the target fish is caught and it doesn't damage the seabed, and that has to be a good thing. Nice. Presentation's not good. Well, who the fuck <laughs> needs presentation on the beach, huh? Now, they may have beaten me before, but it's time for the ultimate challenge. I'm gonna whip their ass. Are you ready? In your dreams. Yeah? Very ready. Let's go, okay. ladies first. Are you in a good mood or a bad mood? Medium. Thank fuck for that. 
So we're all doing apple desserts, yes? Yeah. Okay, the yeah, perfect I'm doing dessert. a simple apple dessert. This, the perfect dessert to follow pork. Yes, Janet? Now, the most important thing about this challenge, OK, the winning dessert is going to be served in the rest of the evening straight after the main course, that, yeah? That's a bit of pressure. Right, Janet, what are you doing? Surprise baked me. Baked apples. Do you think the diners are going to want to pay for a baked apple? It's so simple, I've gone to Harrods and bought mincemeat. Has it got suet in there? It, it has got a tiny bit of suet ah, in it. Yeah. Yeah. Not a fun. lot. Watch your ass pulsating in those jeans again. Yeah, why? Why have you got pastry exactly? Thank because, you. Because I'm making a, a rice pudding apple tart. Oh dear. So I've got pastry, God, the filling a kind of custody tarts. rice pudding filling that should set very nicely, and uh, the apples are going to go on top, just sort of lightly fried in a little bit of butter with a bit of sugar, slightly caramelised. But you, before, people before this have had scallops and potatoes, yes. roast pork. I didn't know about the potatoes. And potatoes are now stodge, stodge, stodge. Not stodge, they'll be fresh apples. I mean, these people will have to lie on the bloody carpet you're, afterwards you're and get over their carbohydrate <laughs> overload. You're ladling in the Harrods mincemeat. It's not exactly Thank a slimmer you. special, but is it? Look at, yes. look, you, that's the hole. Oh. That's the hole that the mincemeat goes in. Where's the volume it's a on that? Hole, isn't it? And that much mincemeat isn't going to make my ass two sizes bigger, is it? It's a small <laughs> hole. It's a very <laughs> small hole. I tried to shut her up. I've never managed it in the last two months. Uh, have a <laughs> fucking go, will you please, yeah? So, whilst you's doing a rice pudding topped with apples, Madam's doing a baked apple. I'm going to keep it really simple doing an apple tart. Just a very simple apple tart. But I'm using all the trimmings of the apple to make a little bit of a puree, a little bit of cinnamon. And then a fresh vanilla seed. Open up, scrape out the seeds, and we're gonna put that on the base of the tart, and then apple sliced really thinly. It's sort of wafer thin. And they're gonna go all the way the around the tart. Form. You're slicing yours thick, Hugh, yes? Quite thick, yeah, because we just thick. want one layer of medium thickly sliced apples over uh -huh. the top of the rice pudding. This is so lovely, it's comforting. Yeah, I'm around. going to serve it with ice cream. And when you serve this at your exquisite dinner parties at home to all your friends, yes? Yeah. Do they enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. Do they? I have people queuing up to come round my house for dinner. Um, so I've rinsed the, the pudding rice, I've blanched it and rinsed it, and now I'm just going to cook it, but instead of baking it in the oven, I'm going to cook it in a saucepan with a little knob of butter and a splash of whole milk. Right. So just a little bit like cooking a risotto. Right. Well, mine's ready to go in the oven. What? Sorry, loves. We've just started. You've got, you've got to have. Yeah, because I'm cooking something that in the real world <laughs> you feel like cooking after you cut the other two courses. The way I see it, this is really kind of a final between Janet and myself. Exactly. Oh, We've both beaten you before. Can you fuck off? And, and you're I just can't believe you finished already. But there we go. You had fuck all to do. But I'd take out the jar, stick it in an apple, <laughs> and bake the fucking thing. That's Sorry. Really lovely. Actually. So my face has been rolled out. <clears throat> Not too thick. Love and then right in the oven. what yeah. we're going to do now is just turn it around, get your finger, and nip the pastry what so it forms this little me? lip. And what that does, it helps to keep the apples in the centre of the tart. Give it a little pierce so it stops the pastry from rising. And then we'll be ready in five minutes to put that puree in there and then our apples on there. Apples look nice, though, don't they? A little bit of colour on them. They do look no, nice. That would make my dessert. That would be perfect. Why are you bothering with all the pastry? That looks no, fantastic. I should just be serving that with a bit of ice cream. You're probably that right. That looks absolutely fantastic. I've got a little bit of Calvados in the apple puree. <laughs> it, it looks like... It looks like a real mess, though. It's it looks all like the puree. It looks like cat Oh, for God's oh, sake. Dear. Hey, listen, guys. Look. It's a puree. Oh. Janet's not happy because it didn't come out of a jar. By the way, I've put the mince meat into the ice cream. I've beaten it into the ice cream and I'm putting it back in the freezer. And then I'm going to pretend it's homemade. The hot cream goes into the egg yolks and sugar, whisking all the time so it doesn't curdle, doesn't scramble. A little bit of rice still in there, might as well, that might as well go in. And then over here, the rice has been simmering for just 15 minutes. It's, it's almost tender. So it's ready to put the two together. So now it's all come together. We've got the rice, the cream, the milk, the egg yolks, the sugar, all in the same pan. We just need to stir it gently over the heat for it to start to thicken up as a custard. Mm, that's come together beautifully now. I don't want to fill it right to the top because I've got to have room for my apple slices over the top. 
Let's give it a little shake. Look at that. Rice pudding in a tart. Rice yeah. pudding in a tart. Yep. Why not? Cool it down. Apples go on top. Yep. Serve it at room temperature. A little bit of apple puree. Oh, that's very fancy. I see. So you use the paste to kind of stand it it's up. It's like cement. It's exactly. Probably going to taste like cement as well. Cool. Dear. Gordon, you around. haven't got any spare apple slices, have you? I've got. He's going to have loads, sir. He's got far too many. I've got a terrible minutes. feeling this... I haven't quite fried enough for the top of my tart. Spread very... them out a bit here. Well, they won't look as good, will it? I Janet, this is what's called this... cooking the real world. Yeah, not apples out of jar. This is what I go and buy down a pastry chef. Why am I going to waste time making it? It looks lovely. I'm not knocking it. A... It is an artwork, Gordon. <laughs> Gordon, you can You know, <laughs> you can't do this in a hurry, can you, Gordon? I can now. I can now. You're okay. holding us up. Hugh, have you finished? Very, very nearly. I'm just going to yeah. make a tiny bit of a glaze for the top. Oh, no, you get on with it. Just a tiny bit more, tiny bit of this syrup on the top. That's pretty much ready. It just needs to settle down for 10 or 15 minutes. We'll serve it at room temperature. What's that? Butter. 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 Look. Butter. And you're going on about my minuscule amount of lard. Oh, look. <laughs> <I'd> be... <laughs> <laughs> He's so anxious to win. Janet, can you fuck off, please? Well, yeah, let me finish, for God's nervous. sake. <laughs> now, we're going to we cook go? this for 10 minutes, then turn it over and cook it upside down so it presses it nice and flat and squashes all those apples into the pastry. Don't mess up my... Hang on, hang on. F 15 minutes. Then we'll turn it over. For how long? 15 minutes. Okay. Right, Janet's apples are in. My tart's going to take about 15 or 20 minutes. Once that comes out, we're going to let it rest. Hugh's tart is resting, and then we're going to serve them all to the blind tasters. I'm back home, up here in Scotland, in Greenock, where my grandfather used to have a butcher's shop, and I'm here to see if it's still there. When my grandfather came back from the war in 1945, he opened a butcher's on Greenock's bustling high street. In those days, everyone brought their meat from the local butcher, and there were queues outside the shop. And it wasn't just like that in Greenock. When I was a kid, everyone brought their meat from local butchers, like my grandfather's. But Britain's butchers are beginning to look like an endangered species. Where'd you get your meat from? Tesco's. Tesco's. <laughs> Tesco's. Out of Tesco's. Out of Tesco's. Tesco's. Supermarkets? Yes. And what's wrong with your butchers? I've got one. I found it. Now, according to these photographs, this is where my grandfather's butcher shop used to be. And it's actually a sort of health food shop now, which is quite sad in a way, because all I remember from him in the early days is just how long and how hard he used to work. Dad's shop was just there. That's right, yes, it used to be. That's right, yes, my most. These days, 75% of our meat is bought from supermarkets. And sadly, butcher shops are closing across the UK. And it's not just the lack of customers that threatens our high street butchers. They're also struggling to find people who want to work in them. Ever thought about becoming a butcher? No, never. Would you ever consider becoming a butcher? No. Oh. You're leaving school in a couple of years' time? Uh, yeah. Ever thought about becoming a butcher? No. Why not? Because <laughs> it smells. <laughs> if we lose the high street butcher, we lose a crucial food skill. The average age of a British butcher today is 57 years of age. So, if there's any chance of the high street butcher surviving, we've got to encourage more youngsters to come into the industry. I'm here in Leeds at the Thomas Danby College to see if there's a glimmer of hope. Morning, guys. How are we? These three 17-year-old lads are bucking the trend and training to be skilled butchers at one of the few colleges that still offer a butchery course. What's your ambitions? Hopefully, to take over my father's shop. He's got a shop in the Borough Market. Women like butchers. <laughs> I thought it was firemen. No, butchers. So butchers butcher. are the new firemen, yeah, right? They love a good butcher. They love a good butcher. If these lads are going to succeed, they need to know how to cut meat. But they also need to understand how to cook it. OK, cooking the steak. And it's a big advantage when customers walk in and ask you um, how to cook a steak perfectly. I've got a fail-safe trick to make sure your steak is cooked perfectly every time. So we've got rare, medium. Well done, it's just there. Is that nice and rare? Yep. yep. That is a rare steak. Danny, how have you cooked yours? Medium. Medium. Good man. So, touch it. How's that cooked? Cool. Fucking hell, yeah, that is well done, yeah. Looks like a pair of Dr. Martins. <laughs> and you cooked this for your girlfriend two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. Is she still with you? Yeah. Is she still chewing as well? <laughs> Give these guys a chance and support your local butchers. These guys are here to stay and we need more of them. Next on the menu, I reveal which chef came bottom of the pile in my celebrity cookbook amnesty. My top three unofficial losers in the poll are... 
and we get the results of the recipe challenge. Will the diners get to eat my classic apple tart, Hugh's rice pudding, or Janet's baked apple? OK, for the first time, we're having a draw. A what? Yes. A draw? Oh, get yes. out! A draw! A draw. Yeah. With a two draw. winners? Yes, with two. So well, someone's going to feel a bit ropey then, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, time to decide whose dessert we'll be serving this evening. Excited? Yes. Yeah, sorry for losing, yes? No. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Right. Thank you. It's quite rustic. Mm. It's really nice and comforting. There's a, really there's a mixture of being sweet and acidic as well. <laughs> I actually prefer the ice cream to the apple. Presentation isn't quite as good on this one, I'd say. Really? It looks uh, slightly burnt around the edges, yeah. but it, I do like it. It's quite simple. I mean, the flavour's nice mm. on that, but... Mm. It's, mm. Yeah, it's simple, and it's not overpowering either. Mm. Nice, crisp pastry. Actually, I don't know about the texture. It's a bit it's cold. And it's funny, isn't it? If it's Is meant it? to be. It's quite eggy, I suppose, but I yeah. really mm. like it. OK. Right. For the first time, we're having a draw. A what? Yes. A draw? Oh, get yes, out! A draw! A draw? Yeah. With a two draw. winners. Yes, with two. So well, someone's going to feel a bit ropey then, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> so we're having two votes for Jeanette. Two. Oh, okay. yes! Well done. Okay, two votes for. It's got to be me. Don't you dare. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry. Well That's all right. Okay, yeah. well done. Mate. I want the last oh, to win! Right. Oh. Um, we have to serve. We'll have to you know, obviously serve them. Both. That's yeah. not really a problem for me. OK. Phew. I'm no. quite glad to be out of this, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you best start now, because yours is going to take you about go, ten go, bloody go, hours. Sorry. Yeah. You're, no. you're <laughs> working now, you know, get right, slicing. Right, right. I'm going back to dip my table and enjoy pudding. Yeah. Yes, please. Perfect. Now, fuck off, both of you. <laughs> Thank Brilliant. you. And don't come back, Janet. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Right, ladies, <laughs> for some bizarre reason, yes, yes, I drew, yeah, with Janet. Ooh. Now, it's called a tart fiend, OK? So it's a nice caramelised, thin apple tart. This is just puff pastry. Nip it over and nip it in. Mm. Apple puree, we cook it for 20 minutes, then we turn it upside down and cook the pastry. Now, the important part is to pack the tart with all the apples. Pack the apples on there, yes? Don't worry about them being broken. Quite large. Now, things. soft butter. We just brush the pastry. Yeah? I think I feel my heart attack coming on right well, now. Well, you know what to do if one happens. <laughs> Fucking yeah, hell, yeah? Good. Exactly. What's the first thing brushing, you do? Brushing, brushing, too. Just make sure it's safe. Make sure it's safe, yes. And then airway. If it was you, I'd have to make sure it was safe. First thing you do is, <laughs> is remove the hoover <laughs> off their cot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, ladies. <laughs> huh? Right, Lucy. Yes, Gordon. Every time I come over here, you disappear. Come here. This is your tart. Let's go. I'm here. Let's go. Well, stay here then. Is that enough, Gordon? Is that enough butter, Gordon? And round the bottom, round the bottom. Yeah. Well, well done, Gordon. Mate. Let's go, ladies. Yeah. Tarts in the oven. Let's go. Yes. Tarts. 180. Okay. 180. Over the last two months, I've been running a celebrity cookbook amnesty, encouraging people to send me their unwanted celebrity cookbooks. I made it my mission to help you clear your kitchen bookshelves of the cookbooks that you thought were crap. Meals in minutes, shredded in seconds. As well as shredding some, I also made some celebrity chef toilet paper. Ah! <laughs> you know what? That is the scariest. Uh, it's Freddy Krueger. Uh, <laughs> the Freddy Krueger of the kitchen. You sent in cookbooks from almost every chef, including six of my old cookbooks, you cheeky buggers. But there were three who came out top, or bottom. My top three unofficial losers in the poll are Ainsley, Gary and Delia. What in the fuck are you doing down there? I didn't expect the safety net of British cooking to be in that category. <laughs> the numbers were too close to call, so to find out who's bottom of the pile, I've come down to the Thames to ask some random passers-by to do a taste test. I've gone through Ainsley's, Delia's and Gary's most sent-in books, picked out a cod recipe, well, we are right next to the river, and asked people to tell me which one they like least. Right, Gary Rosie, parsley cod with roasted potatoes and a mustard sauce. <laughs> Which one of those three dishes is the worst? That one. That one. Yeah. You spit it out or. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Good. Dear. Which one is the worst for you? Mm, let me think. That one. Yeah, this one. <laughs> that is toilet. Ouch. Sorry, Gary. Delia Smith. That's cod wrapped in nori on a sober noodle salad. Oh, no, I don't like that. You don't like that? No, there's nothing to it. Bland oil. Poor Delia. Ainsley Harriet's a citrus crust with salsa, Cajun potatoes and steamed broccoli. No. 
got no flavour. Got no flavour. Which one is the worst? Oh, 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 oh. Probably Ainsley. Ainsley's moans in minutes. Someone had to come last. And based on my totally unscientific survey, the most unpopular celebrity cookbook of those sent in under my amnesty is... Gary. So there's only one place for this. I know where that's going. Damn. You're gonna get your hair wet. Jean Baptiste. OK. <laughs> what happened with the desserts? Come on. 100%. Everybody. 100%, yeah! yeah. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Seriously. Incredible. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Only one person won it, Well done. Well done. Thank you so much. Well done. 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 Happy now? <laughs> One final thing. I just yeah. Yeah. Everyone agreed to pay for the dessert. Yeah. Which, which dessert? Yeah. Obviously, fantastic news. Fantastic. But which dessert did they prefer? Don't tell me that. Fucking baked apple. Which one did they prefer? Okay, they prefer yours. Yeah! Yay! How many? Out of 50, 34 people prefer 34, yours. 34, is that yeah. all? Yeah, and 16 for Jan. And 16? Yeah. Uh, well done. Well done, well done. Happy? Very yes. Very yeah. happy. Ready to stick a tetanus jack in my ass? Never. <laughs> no? Never. Uh, I'm never going to Chelsea Westminster. <laughs> <laughs>